Uh, let me introduce myself, spend a few minutes kind of letting you know who I am. Um, my name is Jeremy Charles. Um, I am a, a filmmaker and I have a production company, Cherokee owned production company called Fire Thief Productions. And we're based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, um, and uh, as you can imagine, uh, spend a lot of time in Tahlequah and the 14 counties um, doing work for the Cherokee Nation. So um, my background is I'm from Oolaga, Oklahoma, um, hometown of Will Rogers. I'm sure everybody knows Will Rogers. Um, that's kind of my claim to fame, uh, you know, as far as my hometown and, uh, and a lot of my family, my Cherokee family is from Stillwell, Stillwell area. Um, and so that's kind of my background. And um, I uh, started working for the nation, um, doing work for the nation, I would say. I don't work for the nation itself. I've always been sort of a, in, a contractor. Uh, about 15 years ago, um, if you guys have ever seen photographs for the Heritage Center or the museums or in a disco magazine or uh, pictures of, you know, advertising chief, things like that for the last couple, last decade, um, you've probably uh, seen my photos. So um, that's kind of where I transitioned from. So I spent about you know, I began as a freelance writer. Um, I became a graphic designer. I dove into photography and made a good career out of that for a long time. And um, about six years ago, um, I decided I was kind of uh, getting burned out on photography, really, and um, really wanted to transition to filmmaking. So I started Fire Thief Productions and uh, with the emphasis on you know, native representation, and uh, really wanted to do, to focus on doing work for native peoples and specifically for our Cherokee people. Um, kind of a crazy scenario, you know. I I'm kind of one of those people who just decide to su to do something and just just do it, um, you know. And uh, so I didn't go to college for I have a psychology degree. I went to college. I have a psychology degree, and I. And I just found my way. So people just had faith in me. You know, they saw my drive, I guess, and gave me a chance. So that's kind of how this came about. So when I started Fire Thief Productions, I'll kind of give you a little background real quick. Um, literally a brand new company. We didn't even have any gear. And uh, I went to, uh, to CNB, um, who was my client in photography. And I was like, hey, I started this native uh, video production company and we really want to do something for the nation. Um, is there like an ad campaign, image campaign, anything that we can do, anything you've got going on? And uh, my boss at the time said, well, actually, we have this TV show we want to create. And it's a uh, kind of in the mode of uh, CBS Sunday Morning, which is kind of a, an amalgamation of short documentary programming. And, uh, and so I was like, well, that sounds kind of interesting. And so the group of us, a small group of us, um, created um, OCO TV from scratch at that time. So it was, it was uh, 2014. And we, we were like, you know, we all kind of got together and agreed that we wanted to make this program and what the tone was going to be. And honestly, I'll be real honest with you, you know, it's like, well, this will be fun for a year, you know what I mean? And, uh, um, you know, and uh, then we'll kind of do some other work. We didn't realize that what we were getting into at the time, we didn't realize that the, uh, <laughs> we didn't realize that there was going to be a, uh, such an out outpouring of support for what we were doing. And pretty quickly, we realized that oh my gosh, the Cherokee people are hungry to see themselves and they're, you know, I think we tapped into this wellspring of, of pride. And, uh, and so that was really, really special. I'm kind of getting the chills because, um, you know, at some point we realized, well, we're creating a historical archive for our tribe, you know, and uh, so it was really special and it, it continues to be really special. Um, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. 
Um, so let me tell you a little bit about that, how that came to be and what that show is about. I don't know. Um, I know it's hard, but you know, raise your hands if you've seen OCO TV. Um, it is <clears throat> on, online mostly these days, but it does play every Sunday at 3.30 on local PBS statewide affiliates. It also airs in Arkansas and in Joplin, Missouri. And it also airs on First Nations Experience Network, which is like a national network that uh, plays native content. I'm sorry, somebody's mowing a lawn outside, so I'll keep talking. So um, I actually made a little PowerPoint for you, and I'm not going to uh, make you look at me the entire time, but I did want to uh, kind of give you a little bit of visual references. So give me one second here. I'm going to share this PowerPoint. Okay, boom, boom. So what I'm talking today is what's become my mission is creating media for Cherokees, by Cherokees, for Cherokees. And what do I mean about that is, um, excuse me one second. I'm stuck in my screen sharing thing. One second. Can we ask her? And um, so, sorry guys, the dog is barking. This is wonderful, isn't it? Um, so that's kind of my mission, creating content by Cherokees for Cherokees. That's just something I've realized that is my passion. So um, who am I uh, real quickly? Um, I told you about my background. And uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, OCO TV, but we're also going to talk about an exciting new project that we developed and kind of give you some background on that. I don't know if anybody, anybody has seen the trailer for Inage. It is a 100% in Cherokee language cartoon that we created a pilot for. And it's actually debuting next week, or actually Friday of this week. Holy crap. So let me go ahead and continue. Um, so. OCO TV. And one thing I want to do, I was going to run through this, guys, just so you know. And I really want to answer some questions at the time. So if uh, Kristen and Nathan can just make sure I leave about 15 minutes or 10 minutes at the end to talk, that'd be awesome. Because I do want to answer your questions. Because I really, really feel strongly that people, I really want to encourage people to do this. So I want to encourage more Cherokees to take up media making. So OCO TV, the idea from the beginning, uh, the DNA of this show has always been very, very um, strong because we all agreed that we wanted to create documentaries, but not just news programming. You know, um, I think you could, if you want to compare it to CBS Sunday Morning, I think we go a little bit more into the filmmaking uh, vision of of creating stories rather than a news way of making them. Right? We kind of dive deeper. We spend more time. We really approach the production values as more of a of a film rather than a TV show, because actually we are making each one of these stories about our citizens are uh, actually short films, and we actually submit them to film festivals. Like you can see, Durbin Feeling here, his his film is actually playing uh, this Thursday night at Drive-In Movie Night. Uh, it's part of the Language Night at the, for the Cherokee Film Office, and I encourage you all to uh, reserve your tickets for that. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the other stuff we're screening. Um, so the purpose of OCO TV, um, you know, we have a, f a few core principles that we wanted to always come back to when we were making OCO TV. And that is we, as you guys know, um, a lot of times Native Americans, you know, generally kind of um, are depicted by mainstream media from an other perspective. And so this number one was we wanted to make sure and take con control of our own story and tell our own story rather than someone else telling it for us. Um, as you can imagine, um, it's been really gratifying being able to do that. Um, not only that, but um, you guys, I'm, I know I'm speaking to the choir here about a lot of these things, but you know, this is also not only 
for Cherokee people. It's also for the greater populace. We made this a show that anyone can watch, no matter if they're Cherokee or not, if they're just, you know, randomly. We wanted to make sure that we were entertaining them and, and showing them a new side of Cherokee culture that they maybe didn't know about. And that is a very common thing. People um, have a lot of weird ideas about who Cherokee people are. You know, um, you've got the headdresses and teepees and you've got, you know, all kinds of weird non-Cherokee kind of thoughts uh, about how the outside world views Cherokee people. And so we really wanted to confront that directly. And you'll see that in, in several of our stories, we tackle it head on. Like, for example, um, one of our stories was uh, that we wanted to tell for years and finally got to do last season was powwow education. And, you know, as we all know, powwows per se are not necessarily Cherokee. So not only did we want to show people what a powwow was like if they hadn't been to one, but we also wanted to make sure they knew that um, it's not actually a Cherokee tradition, right? And so, but it's something that, you know, a lot of Cherokees have adopted. Um, another main goal that we have um, in our program is making sure that Cherokee people are not viewed as relics of history. And that is something all Native Americans face. Um, there, you'd be surprised how many people out there um, just think that natives are extinct in a way. You know what I mean? That they're, um, they maybe don't even exist anymore or they're just like one or two here and there. But it was really important to us to show not only balancing this history that we, we do confront history, and I'll tell you a little bit more of that, about that, but we also wanted to make sure that people knew that we were people living next door to them. You know, that we are, we like the same things they like. We are passionate about, uh, you know, things just like any other person was, you know, and we're not living in teepees with headdresses and whatnot, you know, mud huts or whatever, not necessarily. So, um, that's another goal. Um, one thing that we didn't quite imagine that kind of alluded to earlier was the um, the effect that would have on the audience of Cherokee people themselves and it was really it's been a beautiful beautiful experience to see the pride that a lot of Cherokee citizens find in watching OCO TV um, because it kind of tells stories that maybe wouldn't be told in any other place um, and so I feel like that gives you know, whenever you see yourself, this is about representation in media, you know, where you, if you can't see yourself, then you don't have worth, you know, it kind of lowers your sense of worth, like, well, maybe I'm not valuable if I'm not good enough person to be featured in a documentary or a film or a TV show, you know, maybe I shouldn't be who I am, maybe I should be more like, you know, more mainstream people. Um, and that that has been a powerful, powerful thing that we've done with OCO TV. Um, and again, to circle back, we, um, if you know anything about me, um, I'm really, really insistent on doing things uh, with the top quality that we can possibly do with the resources we're given, right? Um, because I'll be honest with you, the bar in Indian country when we're creating content in Indian country is not that high. And I felt and I saw early on, it's like, guys, if we do this right, if we really come at this um, from a filmmaking perspective and elevating our storytelling ability through cinematography, through really good quality audio, excellent music, um, this is going to have a lot more power. And so we were really, really um, stubborn about that. And so um, it's been stunning how many <laughs> you guys, uh, every year for OCO TV, we, we create almost five hours of original content. Five hours, that's, that's, that's more than three feature films worth of content. Um, we've done, by the end of this season, we'll have done, well, 250 is not even right because if you count our almanac, which are also short films, history, history pieces, I mean, hundreds, literally hundreds of stories about Cherokee people. And it's kind of funny because we were, um, 
you know, early on, we're like, well, I bet we're going to run out of stories, right? It's like, geez, how, how much, how deep is this well? But no, it was, uh, <clears throat> guys, we have some amazing citizens in the Cherokee Nation, and um, we have no shortage of amazing stories to tell. So um, I just want to give you a quick uh, test or, or share this. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, season six of OCO TV is coming out. So I'm going to play with you just a teaser. Uh, it's very dramatic. So. So that season six is actually, we are on the tail end of production of 10 new episodes right now. And it's episode one is coming out this Friday uh, at Drive-In Movie Night, where we'll be also premiering Inage and another short film of mine um, called Toju, which is a, a red bird. And it is sort of a, it's a narrative film. It's a short narrative film. And it's about a, uh, a young woman who's, in parallel histories. So there's um, pre-contact days and sort of dystopian future where Cherokee is the chosen um, language of the future, of the rebellion, basically. So there, and she has to evade a mysterious predator. Uh, so it's kind of like, a, it's a fun little tension building film. And so let me get back to OCO TV. So um, with OCO TV, um, here's the, here are our core um, constituencies when we're talking about people we want to highlight in the Cherokee Nation. Number one, honoring our elders. Um, absolutely one of the most important things we do every day is get to know and honor our knowledge keepers and elders. Um, like you see, for example, um, you, saw, you saw Durbin, a very special man um, who is, uh, we've done a film on last season, um, who just recently passed, and a uh, much beloved man. But you also see down here, um, uh, Woody Hare. Woody Hare also almost uh, recently passed as well. Um, Woody Hare was a famous, was famous around the Kenwood parts and, and beyond for his hog fries. He was the man. And so we uh, went to his house and we actually went to his birthday party and we went to and we had a hog fry on the 4th of July with him and you know it was just these kinds of stories are what it's all about honestly um, it's an absolute privilege to be able to recognize those important people um, and we love to you know feature speakers in the language who and we actually want them to speak in Cherokee on the show you know what I mean um, um, and then if you kind of look around, um, uh, this is Brindley Good Voice. She's coming up this season. She's a young uh, wrestler. And she was kind of an innovator, an early adopter of women in wrestling. She grew up wrestling boys until they, they had a, a women's um, division in, in wrestling. Just recently, last year was the first state tournament actually uh, um, unsanctioned by OSSA. So you know, people who are out there doing things passionately. Um, we we want to make sure another big part of our mission is to highlight the role of women. As we all know, we uh, we have powerful, amazing women in the Cherokee Nation. And, um, you know, all too often in mainstream media, you know, for a long time, men kind of dominated and controlled messaging. And um, obviously times have changed. But, you know, especially because our women are so integral to our to our communities we wanted to make sure that we're always representing women doing wonderful things um, we want to draw attention to our artists um, we also uh, whether it be from traditional art forms to contemporary art forms we um, whenever a, an athlete you know does something of note we want to make sure that you know people love to see 
uh, our athletes um, compete and win and um, and lose. You know what I mean? And just show up and do the hard work. For example, um, for you've got Brindley here. We've we've done um, Ryan Helsley, who is a pitcher. Um, he's a major league pitcher. Um, we did we've done a story on Mason Fine. You guys probably know Mason Fine. The quarterback from Locust Grove went to University of North Texas and had an awesome career there. Um, Lindy Waters, um, Oklahoma State Cowboy, um, uh, star basketball point guard. Um, but not just, you know, it's not that you have to be a, a big, big time star. But it's more of like um, people who are just gifted at what they do in all walks of life. We want to make sure that we you know, recognize leaders and not only leaders, you know, we actually don't really feature tribal leaders uh, in our, in our tribe just to kind of insulate ourselves against political stuff. Cause this is not a show where this is a show for everyone. And so we want to make sure we don't ever, uh, you know, go down that road where we're favoring uh, politicians, I would say. So, um, but I mean, leaders from the community, environmentalists, uh, people who are just doing something for the people that is notable and they're passionate about. Um, another kind of coming back to this, a very, very important part of what we do is here is sharing the history from the Cherokee perspective. And so what you'll find is every episode of OSCO TV has a history segment in it. It's called Cherokee Almanac. Um, and that's wide ranging uh, across a lot of topics. Um, a lot of times we're able to, we actually use our own tribal historians and we, we, we do a lot of research uh, to make sure we are really accurate. And um, we also, um, we want to make sure that it's told from our perspective rather than the mainstream perspective, which is so, so important. Um, and then another thing that which I kind of spoke to briefly is language promotion. Um, there's kind of segueing into the next topic here, language pr promotion and preservation. Um, I think I've been touched and a lot of us on our team has, have been touched by um, the speakers that we've got to meet and uh, we've been touched by the leaders um, in the language department. And um, and again, like I said, we all we want to make sure that our our first language speakers and even just speakers of all walks of life are uh, recognized. And um, that has become a major um, piece of my my personal uh, mission in in filmmaking. And I'll talk about that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to play a couple minutes of. The Gertie family. Um, this story is really special to me. I went to, uh, uh, and does anybody know the Gerties uh, on Gertie Hill? Um, they they have a, you know, they're special to me because I, I'm, I'm good friends with Janelle, who I grew up with in middle school. We had, we went to summer camps a few years together and, uh, and Becky and, um, this, this story kind of summarizes the importance. To me, um, this has a lot of what makes OCO TV special in it. So let me just play this and let you guys enjoy it for a second. could sing but she didn't my dad did so he he was the one that uh, introduced me to the Cherokee song all the Cherokees that lived in that area would gather at the 
uh, this uh, cemetery, and they would sing those songs, Cherokee songs. All my other sisters could sing too, just like my daughters do. They learned the same way, just by hearing. There were churches here and there that still sing Cherokee songs. We would visit, and my daughters were willing to sing with their dad, and we'd all go up there and we sing. Singers include Susan, myself, Brenda, Linda, Elizabeth, Joan, and our mother Wanda, and of course Becky and Janelle, and we are the Gertie family singers. We grew up with our grandparents being right here on our dad's side. You know, so it, the Grandma and Duda's house was right there. My Grandma and Duda were um, stomp dance people at the very beginning. They went to uh, stomp grounds. They went to the ceremonial grounds. And Duda was a leader. He would sing. And that's, that's where I think a lot of the singing that Duda sang uh, came from that. So whenever they started going to church, that's when Duda used to, uh, would lead songs. And he, he had the spirit. He had, you know, he, was, he would sing them songs and it would just be, you know, he could fill that whole church building with his voice. Whoever we are comes from them, comes from them teaching us how to be, teaching us how to sing. Uh, and teaching us the how to how to be how to be Cherokee. Hey, Miles. <laughs> they call this Gertie Hill because there's so many of us that live here. My grandpa's sister lives here. My grandpa actually lives up the hill here. And then his brother lives on the other side of the hill. And my uh, grandpa's dad used to live up here on the hill. His house is gone now. And so I would come down here and spend all summer with my grandparents. So I was down here with my cousins and we'd be running around in the woods. I that snowball now. All right. <laughs> and just like, just like they're doing now, this is what we would do. These songs that we pass down from each generation and the things that we do, the things that we show them, you know, it's, it's just like being a part of this big chain and each one of us is a link and we're just passing this down and hopefully each link is just as strong as the one before it. And maybe one of these days I'm hoping that my own grandchildren will come out here and play. You know, and my son, maybe we'll sing the songs like we were singing inside. And they'll ask him, you know, they'll say, how do you know these songs, Edod? You know, who taught them to you? And he'll tell them, your grandma, your grandma taught them to me. I do feel that family life is very important. And uh, I try to keep it that way. And I do truly believe that it's the, the singing, our belief, that keeps us together. Yes, I'll keep on, keep on singing because that is a God-given talent. The spiritual Cherokee songs, uh, they might not <laughs> want me to sing with them, but I'm going to be singing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, um, let me kind of, you don't need to see this part. Sorry, guys, my mouse is not working. Where is my mouse? Okay. So, um, 
Golly, that makes me smile. I love that story. Um, special, special. But this is kind of, to me, that's what we do at, at OCO TV. You know, we have adventure stories, but we also have, you know, heartfelt stories about important things that people don't get to see very often. God, I'm getting a little teary eyed. <laughs> um, so uh, I did want to talk to you guys about. Um, this mission of, of language preservation that's kind of caught me, um, inspired me, um, because I've been listening. You know, when we go out into the communities, um, I listen to to people in the nation um, who know how important language preservation is, and um, we know that our language is in um, you know in jeopardy, and it's absolutely amazing how. Um, We've been able to, uh, and thanks to Chief Hoskin and uh, the language department, uh, really deciding to do something about it, you know, something big, go for it, right? And so that really inspired me. And, um, you know, television itself and what I do has had a huge impact on the Cherokee language. And, you know, you could kind of pinpoint the time in history where TV became and it came to every household. That's when, you know, when a lot of native languages started dying because, you know, when you see, you guys know the power of TV, what the things that you see, you repeat. If you're a child, you repeat cartoons over and over again. Um, you watch the same shows every day, you know, and, you know, there was nothing for native, native Americans in there. And so, you know, without being able to see yourself on screen, Again, like I was saying before, you start not valuing yourself, perhaps, you know what I mean? Not valuing, valuing your culture. And so for me, I was like, well, what do I do? I make media. Well, how can I help? I can help by creating media for Cherokees and in the Cherokee language. And so last year, um, I came to Chief, and I've been working on these ideas for a long time uh, about, you know, I was like, we gotta have short films in the language. We gotta do this and that. Like, of course, language departments have been doing this for a long time, but of course I wanted to do it too. And I decided that, um, you know, this is my, it's, became, it's become my mission, I guess. And so I came to Chief and was like, hey, we need, I would love to get your buy-in on uh, I really want to do all this content, but what we really knew, need to do and after getting to know Howard uh, Payton and Kristen and I already knew Roy Boney and Ryan Mackey and, and the other folks over at the Master's Language Apprentice Program. Um, we decided that the best thing we could do with the most impact is to go ahead and, and create a cartoon. A really, and, and I was like, guys, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it right, you know? Um, I really was, uh, I really wanted what, this cartoon to be something that kids could identify with and watch over and over, just like they do all their favorite titles at home. All the parents out there, you're thinking of like, what is my kid uh, watching over and over again, right? You know, Octonauts or Dora or whatever, you know? Um, so not only are we kind of, pers we're pursuing um, redubbing cartoons, by the way, I don't know if anybody knows that, but I'm trying to, lure some major cartoon titles in for redubbing and we're making some progress on that. So you might hear updates about that eventually, but we wanted to focus all of our effort on creating a cartoon for the Cherokee people, for the Cherokee children. So um, let me share my screen again here. And I wanted to show you about this really special project that, um, that we're really proud of. Um, and it's called Inage. And it's a uh, cartoon that means in the woods in Cherokee. And with the help of Roy Boney, the creating artist who we brought on, and Howard Payton, Kristen Thomas, Ryan Mackey, and my team, uh, Blake Brown, and Chelsea Columbus, we, uh, we decided that we needed to um, start production on this. We got a little money from Chief, and it was, you know, to, for us to, to be allowed to do this. And we, so we created a pilot, I'm trying to share screen again. Here we go.
And so we have this awesome cartoon called uh, Inage. This is the title screen. So I don't know if you guys have seen the trailer. I'm going to play it for you in a minute. This cartoon is uh, follows the adventures of these four primary characters. Um, on the left, we have Juxus. He's a waya, wolf. He's kind of feisty and athletic and loyal, kind of crabby. Um, and little, little Dai is, is the Jistu. And um, she's the classic trickster character. She's hyper and she gets into mischief. She causes problems. And she's real energetic like that. And then Kuli, Kuli Wohi, the Yon, he, uh, he is kind of the moral center of the group and he's the medicine keeper. And he kind of makes sure they're all behaving <laughs> um, in a lot of ways. And he kind of comes to the rescue sometimes with his uh, good judgment. And then on the far right, Ani, Ani Weg, um, the deer. And so she's also kind of a moral center and she's kind of dainty. And um, each one of these have special abilities, each one of these characters that are uh, something you need to know is we worked very hard on this, on this uh, cartoon to make sure that it really reflected the Cherokee worldview. Um, all the way from the world they live in, Turtle Island, um, all the way through to the details. Um, and I'd like to tell you more about those here. Let's go ahead and watch the trailer. So, um, man, that's, that's fun. Isn't that, uh, isn't that a uh, theme song, uh, addictive? <laughs> it's an earworm. Everybody I know just sings it constantly. Um, so just so you guys know, this is where we began the Roy Boney's original drawings here. This is our original rendering. And can you see the, like how this has evolved? Um, kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, uh, from, from uh oops okay it won't let me go back from that to this so just real quickly i do want to make time for your questions um actually i can maybe some of you questions about um inage or oco tv i would love to to talk to you now let's leave about 15 minutes for that we've got about 15 minutes left um well, um, I just wanted to kind of scroll through our, um, our question here. Um, thank you guys for commenting. Um, did you like the theme song? That theme song was uh, written by Connor McFarland. He's not Cherokee, but he's a very frequent collaborator. Um, he wrote the melody to it, but um, Cora Flute, our beloved um, speaker, She's a great singer and she agreed to do the, she wrote the lyrics and performed it for us. And, and so originally it was kind of this bare bones song. We added fiddle and banjos to make it, make it feel more mountainy. We added sh shell shakers, obviously, you know, kind of a driving drum reminiscent of a stomp um, a little bit. And then um, we, for the final touches, we brought the Cherokee Youth Choir on to do the background vocals, which really added something, you know, in my opinion. 
Um, would anybody, um, would anybody like to ask a question? Does anybody want to know any details about about uh, OCOTV or Inage? But I'll keep talking in the meantime. But so I did want to tell you guys. Me? Yes, ma'am. We we have some questions over here in the Q and A. You want okay. to see those? And so some of our questions are about the dubbing. Okay. Good. Oh yes, so I just I was open. Thank you. I was open, opening the wrong panel. <laughs> um, I'm smart. Yes, subtitles. So just so you guys know, um, our goal with this animated series pilot is to get it out there in the mainstream media, firstly, because we feel like it's something, uh, subtitles, subtitled content, foreign language content, if you will, um, is definitely becoming way more accepted than it was when I was a young kid. My kids, um, don't shy away from subtitled content at all. My daughter, um, my oldest daughter watches anime all the time. Um, and we don't feel like it's a barrier anymore. So obviously our first audience is Cherokee people, uh, but our second audience is the general populace who we can educate about Cherokee culture, right? And so as far as subtitles, when we do a movie night on Friday, I hope you all can make it. We will be having subtitles in uh, on on the on the the pilot the pilot's 11 minutes long it's like one episode uh only at this time and um we will have subtitles on there but when you get to say a youtube link or something we'll be able to turn subtitles on and off because we do want kids to not have to rely on subtitles you know what i mean because it might hamper you know their language um intake right um but that's optional but that gives us the ability to reach out to other parts of the country in the world because they can they'll understand what's going on thank you for that melanie um known cartoon titles for possible cherokee or language overdubbing well um i can't tell you a whole lot because there's a lot of balls in the air judy but we are um we've been talking with berenstain bears um I will give you a little bit of a tease and say um, there's a big cartoon brand uh, that I'm in conversations with right now, uh, early on, um, uh, called Curious George. Um, we've actually been making the rounds um, to different, we went, we've been to PBS, we've got contacts at Cartoon Network, Netflix, NBC Universal, um, Nickelodeon, places, uh, Amazon, uh, we're actually uh, going out there and, and approaching other mainstream animation distributors and saying, hey, can you work with us on redubbing? So not anything big to announce right now, but we're out there and we're just so you know, we're trying to get it done. Um, let's see, Doug wants to know, and I'll come back to you, Melanie. Um, Doug wants to know when it's going to air. First of all, we were premiering on Friday night at the language, uh, at the uh, Cherokee Film Office drive-in movie night at Holiday, where you can actually drive in and watch it. Um, stay tuned about when we're going to have it online. I would imagine that we're going to put it on the nation's uh, social media page, the full episode at some point. Um, I don't have very good information about that yet, but we will definitely let you guys know and the nation will I'm sure announce when it's fully available to watch. Um, Melanie wants to know, uh, CEO Melanie, um, talking about opportunities for at-large citizens. Um, so I guess um, we actually do, um, for OCO TV, we, we used to travel before the pandemic days around and do um, and do stories around the nation. <clears throat> For example, you might remember a football star out of Washington named Sonny Six Killer in the 70s. Um, he was a big time, big time football star. He was the first Native American on the cover of Sports Illustrated that we know of, that he knows of. Um, he played for the Washington, uh, for Washington Huskies and he was, a, he brought their, he totally 
turned around their football program, and he also had a short stint in the NFL. Um, and so um, he's actually, you're gonna see a story about Sonny. And he lives in Seattle, he's made his home in Seattle. Uh, and for example, that's a story that we would travel and do. We, and actually, so, um, so the plan, um, Brie, Bri or Brie, I say Brie, right? Um, a plan for how many episodes will be put out? Well, we hope to do many seasons of Inage. Um, and I assume you're talking about that. And OCO TV, I think we can go on forever, I hope, because we have so many amazing stories to tell. But for Inage, um, we don't know how, what's going to, we don't really know what's going to happen next. We're first going to try to get a distributors to help us with funding the production. You know, it's very expensive to make animations, very, very expensive um, to do it, you know, in a high quality way, especially. Um, so kind of stay tuned on that. I really wouldn't want to tell you something that I don't know the answer to. Um, and Mr. Roy Boney wants to know about Inage merch. Well, golly, I left my stuff at the studio. <laughs> um, but Roy, uh, Roy's characters have been brought to life in a 3D printing, uh, in a 3D printer. We have figurines already kind of mocked up. It's like, hey, check it out, kids. Would you be interested in buying these figurines? Um, we have visions for... Um, coloring books, young, young readers book series in Cherokee with kind of um, diver, divergent plot lines, you know, that kind of builds on the world that they're living in. And um, we'll have t-shirts for sure and stickers and stuff like that. But we would love to kind of hear any ideas you guys have. Uh, <laughs> um, so Cassie wants to know, um, Traditional dishes like cooking show. Yes, thank you, Cassie. Cooking show. Actually, I've been, and me and Jen, Lauren, the host of OCO TV and executive producer, who is incidentally my wife, um, we have been dreaming of a cooking show that's specifically about Cherokee chefs. But, um, you know, that's a big ask to do, and it's a lot of work, but we do feature chefs a lot, actually. Um, just and, and and to promote the first episode of the next season we have nico albert she is a chef here she lives here in tulsa and she was the, she's made her way through the restaurant industry and formerly at duet which is a pretty uh, nice restaurant that featured her dishes what's cool about her is um she's at a level in her career where she controls the menus in these restaurants that she works in and she actually incorporates Cherokee and native uh, cuisine into the menu for so that, you know, any, any of the patrons and it's, um, can have native foods and some of them have never had native foods. Um, we have done stories on, on Betty Smith, um, beloved Betty Smith. And um, I don't know if you remember Edith Knight. I'm sure a lot of people here remember Edith Knight, the late Edith Knight. She, we did a story about her doing Kanachi. Um, Bradley Dry, who is a young chef here in, 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 in Tulsa as well. And Taylor Barton, another young chef in Tulsa. All those were stories about food and cooking and we have some more in store for you too. So we definitely um, agree um, with Judy, uh, with uh, whoever it was now, Bri, um, about the need for cooking. Um, docs, uh, The Simpsons, Judy's asking about The Simpsons. Um, that would be amazing. Um, let's make note of that. Contacting The Simpsons. <laughs> All right, thank you, Judy, for that suggestion. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reach out to them. It's a great idea. Um, so, Thank you, Melanie, for asking about who's doing the animation. Um, we, um, you know, I've been in this business for a while and I have lots of friends and contacts, right? And so whenever we were searching for an animation partner, my, my production company doesn't do heavy and, um, you know, uh, big cartoon animations per se, right? But I, you know, I knew we weren't really capable of that. That's a whole specialty into itself. So we actually... I recruited three different uh, agencies um, and kind of 
we went through a process of finding out who would be the best partner and we chose crew filter they're actually based here in tulsa uh friends of mine uh from way back in my earlier career days and um they came with the most passion for the for inage and they they came with a lot of um they really listened to us and they really um they 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 knew how important it was to our Cherokee people for this to be really good and really accurate as well. So Creative Filter and Eric Lee is the lead animator there. His wife is Cherokee. So he kind of had a background for 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 the culture and they've been amazing. They've been they they're really, really proud of of being able to do this work with us. And so I hope that we can continue working with them. They use Blender, a free 3d program and then sort of editing stuff like uh adobe premiere and stuff like that that's what we use so blender a free 3d program is can make these high quality animations you don't need money to do it you just need to knowledge and time um oh melanie's mentioning a uh, uh an inclusive bookstore in minneapolis um as a good place for these books to go um own, owned by an Ojibwe author. Yes, absolutely. And this is something that we are also looking into is um, the Cherokee Nation is, is a leader in language preservation, thanks to our language department, all of our ambassadors for language. And, um, and part of that is responsibility, you know, um, and a lot of other tribes look to the Cherokee Nation for leadership in language preservation because we've kind of done it best and you know done it really well and so what we're hoping is that we can at some point offer um young reader book series and and even license out the cartoons and the other assets themselves possibly to for other uh indian nations to uh translate into their own language and so they can also preserve their languages as well and that that's kind of um you know that's still up for debate and we'll see what happens but that's something i think we're all interested in in, um, in exploring um is there in, any other questions um jeremy mm -hmm. rhonda has one that kind of piggybacks on this a little bit are there any video game designs in the work that's a great great question um i don't um that's kind of out of my range of knowledge, honestly. Um, I know that um, there are. There are open source uh, video game platforms. There are actually engines that you can use, repurpose, uh, to create your own, to use your own 3D models in that video game platform. Um, I think others would probably know better than me, uh, but I definitely know it's possible. And I'm pretty sure that there are people working on that, <laughs> but I don't know a whole lot about it as far as in the Cherokee language. Joseph Herbert just recently um, worked with a few folks to finish one, and that's Trickster. I'm going to add a little information that I know about it in the chat for anyone else who's interested. Cool. Well, guys, I think, is this the end of our time? It is. Okay. Well, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, Wado, everybody, for coming, and um, I really hope that you found a little inspiration in, uh, in my passions, and, um, and I hope that you'll encourage yourselves and your children, your grandchildren, whoever, to consider making media in Cherokee language and for Cherokee people, because we really, really need a lot of people doing this. Um, I'm not alone. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of great people making um, other animations, um, video games, working in language, developing language um, curriculum, and all kinds of techniques, books. Uh, but we need you guys to do it too. We need everyone to do it because if we can walk around Walmart and everybody's speaking speak Cherokee to each other, that's where we need to be, right? So, uh, Wado, thank you. Appreciate you all.